were immigrants to the United States from South Africa. Also with us, CNN political commentator, the Republican strategist, Anna Navarro. Uh, and Peter, I'll start with you because you wrote a very compelling article, and I'll put a line up on the screen because I want you to explain to our viewers what you meant. As with uh, Dr. Martin Luther King, it is this subversive aspect of Mandela's legacy that is most in danger of being erased as he enters America's pantheon of sanitized moral icons. But it is precisely the aspect that Americans most badly need. All right, so tell us what's being left out of Nelson Mandela's story today. What's being left out is that for most of Mandela's life as an activist against apartheid, the United States government was supportive of South Africa's apartheid regime because they were our allies in the Cold War. And we have been taught since the Cold War by politicians have said it again and again that the Cold War was simply a struggle for freedom in which we were on the side of the angels and the Soviet Union was on the side of evil. Now, the Soviet Union was an evil regime, but there's another story of the Cold War, a story that Mandela's life uh, shows that Americans don't like to talk about that much. And those are all of the moments during the Cold War where, in, in the name of anti-communism, we supported brutally oppressive regimes and fought and stood against freedom fighters like Nelson Mandela. Anna, you live in Miami, uh, and you, uh, you have a unique perspective, because you remember when Nelson Mandela was freed from Robben Island, and he came to Miami. What happened? I was uh, 18 years old. I was a senior in high school, and it was a big, big deal in Miami that Nelson Mandela was coming. It was 1990, just a few months afterwards. But about a week before he was scheduled to come, he did an interview where he declared his friendship, as Bill Clinton just said, his absolute loyalty to those who stood with him, and Fidel Castro, Gaddafi, had stood with him. So he declared his friendship with Castro, and as you can imagine, Wolf, that was a very difficult thing for Cuban Americans, and it ended up there being protests. It then turned into a boycott by the African American community because they felt uh, Mandela had been snubbed, and it opened up economic opportunities at the end after a settlement with the African American community. You remember that vividly. Uh, Terrence, uh, you played Nelson Mandela in the film Winnie Mandela. Uh, I want to play a clip from you. This is an interview that Nelson Mandela gave to CNN back in the year 2000, talking about his so called terrorist status. Listen to this. I was uh, called a terrorist yesterday, but. Uh, then I came out of jail. Uh, many people embraced me, including my enemies. And uh, that is what I normally tell other people who say, those who are struggling for liberation in their country are terrorists. I tell them that uh, I was also a terrorist yesterday. But uh, today I'm admired by the very people who said I was one. Terrence, uh, you had to play him on the big screen. You really had to get into his head. Talk a little bit about what you learned about Nelson Mandela during that experience. Well, one of the things that, that touched me most was his trial. During his Ravonia trial, he actually gave three hours of testimony where he spoke in detail about, he said, and, and my Lord, I now wish to turn to the question of guerrilla warfare and why it was necessary in a foreign country to, to carry out those things. And he spoke about thousands of atrocities that had taken place over 60, 70 years to where there was nothing left for the South Africans to do but to defend themselves by whatever means they had, even though that was against his nature. Um, it, it broke my heart to see such a gentle man have to turn to what we consider barbaric acts, but when you're defending your family, when your family is just being killed without any conscience, and when the United States turns its back with Reagan turned